Well, hello, this is Bishop Spears again, and welcome to Sunday morning worship. Let me be the first to share with you that today is Pentecostal Sunday, literally all over the world. It is amazing that uh, here in 2020, that there are still biblical principles that ought to be established and to be practiced among the Christian community. And so I want to encourage you today that you make sure you call and connect and get other family members to participate in this worship experience. We are believing God for a Pentecostal Sunday so that what we've read in Acts chapter 2 will actually come alive in our life. Second, let me just encourage you that I know there are a lot of questions that are going forth in the world today because people want to know why. As a matter of fact, what was happening in the Old Testament times is when they raised the question, what meaneth this? We are still in that place in America and in the world where people are asking what meaning this. Well, I'm going to do my level best to try to give some answers today. Remember, however, the answers I provide come purely from a place of the Bible, from a biblical expression. It's kind of difficult to answer questions from the world when oftentimes we don't know where they come from. But I declare in the name of Jesus, this word that God has given me today is going to bless you. It's going to bless you in your home. It's going to bless your family. So I encourage you to stay with us. You will be blessed. As a matter of fact, go ahead and turn to Ephesians chapter 6. Start meditating on that word until I come back to the pulpit. Peace. Be blessed. We love you today. For us in Jesus' name. Amen. 
want to encourage you, one, to stay safe and to make sure, First St. John, that you are receiving the messages that the bishop is sharing and, and all the updates so that we'll know how to operate in this new normal. Amen? And then, of course, we do want to encourage everyone again as we are uh, preparing to do the uh, 2020 census. Uh, by now, you should have received your census by mail or even you can complete it by phone or online. Please take the opportunity to make a difference in your communities. Complete the census will determine how billions of dollars can flow through our communities for schools, family support, and representation in government over the next decade. So do your part and participate in the 2020 census. Amen? And of course, we do want to encourage you as we're celebrating this final day in the month of May, we always want to celebrate all of our May babies and anniversaries. Amen? And so if you are celebrating a birthday in the month of May, you have an anniversary in the month of May, we celebrate you. Matter of fact, we have this song just for you. Amen.
every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Amen. This is a place and a time, really a season for the body of Christ, particularly that we ought to be saying something. Amen. There's so many different protests that are going on and so many places uh, where people are destructive and they're destroying stuff, but there's a way, there's a way to protest without destruction. Amen. And so we bless and praise our God today and we honor him because he above all is to be praised. Amen. Bow with me, if you will, for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, how we bless you and praise you. Today we thank you and praise you, God, for your goodness and your mercy. And we thank you, Lord, for this day that you have given us. We honor you and we praise you that you have afforded us the privilege, Lord, to come before your throne once again. We love you so much and we're thankful for all that you do and for every way that you make God in order for us to be able to operate, to live even in this life. So we pray and we ask now, Lord, the blessing on your word, that your word will provide strength, your word will provide encouragement. As a matter of fact, we pray, God, for the power of your word to penetrate our hearts. Lord, we need a word from you. We, we need a word from you, God. If we don't hear from you, God, we don't know what we will do. And so we pray and we ask, Lord, for your blessing. I pray personally that your anointing, Holy Spirit, will rest upon me. As a matter of fact, I pray that your anointing will be heavy on my life and that you, God, will use me for your glory. And then, Master, when we've done all that you have assigned for our hands and our hearts to do this day, we'll be careful and quick to give you all the praise and all of the glory. It is in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. And we ask it all, amen and amen. Well, come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, I really want to encourage you. I do need your prayers. Several things are happening today. This is Pentecostal Sunday, amen. amen. 50 days ago, we were celebrating uh, Resurrection Sunday and we were praising God for his Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, primarily after that, Jesus had ascended to go home to be with his father. The Bible says in the upper room that the Holy Spirit came with strong wind with fire, with fervency, and the Bible says, and he rested upon all of them that were in the upper room. And so we bless and we praise our God for his goodness. We were, according to the word, filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, and because of him, he helps us to move and have our being. Amen. And so we're thankful for the Lord for all that he does and all that he is doing in our life. Secondly, I want to say a word. I know across the country there are so many people who have been affected by uh, George Floyd's death. And uh, we pray for his family and we pray for that city. We pray for that place, uh, particularly uh, in that area of community, uh, so that people understand that you can protest, you can protest, but not be destructive. And so I know we've got a lot of things that are going on 
in relation to that. Amen. But I want to encourage us to be strong and to maintain our hope and our help which comes from the Lord. Amen. There is a word from God and it is found in Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 10, there is a particular word from the Lord. It reads in this manner, finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the power of this dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Finally, verse 13 says, therefore put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, the Bible says stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. Let me read also verse number 18. The Bible says, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak words that may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains, pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Amen and amen. I want to talk today from this subject. This means war. This means war. Let me open today's message by sharing with you. I really believe that this is a timely word for our season, for where we are and for what we are experiencing, particularly because there are so many people who primarily are in the body of Christ who are raising questions they've never raised before. I mean, people who are strong in the faith, who have a close relationship with God, and yet they're moving into a place where they are doubting God or God's existence, all because of these things that are occurring in our world. I was reminded, as a matter of fact, in Psalm 2, when you read that psalm, the Bible says these words, that there were people who were trying with every effort to break the chains or to destroy or to hold hostage bound people who are part of the anointing or the anointed ones of God. And they raised the question, where is your God? The Bible responds by saying that God is in heaven and he's doing nothing but laughing. Somebody ought to hear me today because maybe in your mind, maybe in your heart, you, from your estimation, God ought to be doing more. Maybe from your perspective because it doesn't seem like God is moving at the pace or the level with the extensive in terms of enforcing the power of God, you want to know, well, where is God? 
can I encourage you today by sharing with you that that's been an age-old question that people have asked for a number of years. And as a matter of fact, there's a second question that they ask, and they ask questions like, what meaning this? They want to know where is God, and why is it that God is not doing something about all of these things that are going on? And they want to know what, what meaning this. I, I want to encourage you today because you've got to understand that no matter how difficult it looks, God is still in control. No matter what you're hearing, no matter what we are experiencing on the landscape of, of America, particularly with buildings that are being destroyed and families that are being separated and broken apart because of death and dying, of measures uh, far beyond our control, particularly as it relates to people who lose loved ones and are Because God has all 
first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be given unto you. That God is saying the body of Christ ought to be kingdom minded. That everything that we do in terms of the Christian life is indeed, God says, we're dealing with a super human being or being that is out of our control, which means that we need God to battle on grounds that are uh, without our strength, without our effort. He, does, he says, as a matter of fact, I provide for you a resource that you could not even function with if it was not for me. He says, as a matter of fact, every believer has to have a place of time that if you're going to fight with the enemy, you got to have a power that you're not even familiar with. As 
that you can win the war. Do I have a witness? And so Paul, in his efforts, breaks it down. Let me just share with you uh, one of the things that is interesting is that what we are experiencing is that we are dealing with uh, a power that is beyond our spectrum. The enemy has, has knowledge beyond our reach. The enemy has power beyond our reach in terms of our resources. And God is saying that in order for us to beat him, we got to operate with divine power. Because we are, we are not work, working against spiritual or human uh, frailties or uh, weaknesses, but we're dealing with, in other words, he says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers in high places. And that in order for us to even represent, we need uh, to use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons. That we've got to figure out how to grab a hold of spiritual arsenal or resources that are available to us that we haven't taken advantage of. See, when we are talking about praising God, practicing praising God, we really are preparing you for battle. When we start talking about worshiping God and witnessing in your worship, we are talking about preparing you for spiritual battle. Because in order to beat the enemy, watch this, in every place, when you look in the Old Testament times, look at what God does. He says to the children of Israel, he says, if you're going to win this fight, he said, put the tribe of Judah up front. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He said, while you've been winning your war with your own, 
kingdom of God. That's the reason why you got to protect, you got to preserve who you are, and then you got to watch over your anointing. Don't allow your anointing to be released in the wrong places. I'm getting all kinds of questions. People who are raising questions like, do I still belong here? The enemy is always trying to talk
He says we must have the whole armor of God. He says, but you got to identify who the enemy is. Yeah. Because our enemy is, is a hassler. He is a spiritual foe that forces us to be on guard at all times. Yeah. He's quick. He's cunning. He is. The text says,
greater the suffering, greater the usage of God. We've got to understand, God says, you've got to anticipate that the enemy is going to try something every day. That there will be a means by which God attacks your mind, he attacks your heart, or he attacks your spirit. First of all, he comes after your mind because if he can change the way you think about God, if he can change your thoughts about what
of that song is paramount for this season because we've got to declare this means war. I'm telling you, we are blessed by the word of God. Ephesians is a powerful text, primarily chapter 6. And I just, I thank God for you today, Elder Sherry, with us. That word, amen. Amen. Awesome word again. And we want to say thank you. Thank you, And sir. of course, we do want to encourage uh, the body of Christ not to get distracted of what's going yes. on because when you look back on these last 10, 11 weeks, it was almost like everyone was focusing on God and now he's trying to distract us and get our attention yeah. away from him. Amen. And so that's why we have to put on the whole armor so we can be prepared to fight him and fight him well. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And so again, thank you for St. John for all you do. Thank yeah. you for sowing into the ministry, sowing into the man of God. Thank you for just being there for what God is doing in our lives and continue to allow the gospel message to go forth. Not only into your sanctuary, but even into your homes and even over electronic media. Thank you so much. And don't forget, when you're watching it, make sure you hit that like button and then you share it so that the world that you live in, people can continue to hear the gospel. Amen. Not in our world. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Elder, so much. Listen, let me tell you, I know that there are a lot of different protests that are going on. And there are a lot of different approaches to trying to give some rhyme or reason uh, in terms of how to express your anger. 
But I really believe that if we're going to shout at our giant, we can't do it with a quiet mouth or a mouth that's closed. You got to open up your mouth and praise the Lord. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you sometime this week. And listen, don't forget to prepare to become a registered voter. We can make a lot of noise by making our vote count. God bless you. Peace.